At the risk of sounding like a broken record, once again, I'm going to be talking about rising inventory and falling prices. I, I had the same conversation last week and not a week prior to that. And in fact, over the entirety of this summer in 2024, we've been talking pretty well about rising inventory and falling prices. What happened to all the promises that were given to us by the so-called experts that once the Bank of Canada enters the rate cutting cycle, which we've been at for the past three announcements. We cut the rates by 75 basis points since it started. We were at 5% right now at 425, and this is likely to continue. So, you know, potential buyers are actually cognizant about this fact that the rates are likely to continue falling. And yet we see nothing reflected in the marketplace. The inventory is rising and the prices are going down. So once again, this is the topic of a conversation. We're gonna look at some of the reasons that are being put forward by the experts to underpin the current real estate drama. The condos is a dead space. New construction is a dead space. Detached houses are selling even though it takes longer to sell them and the prices are somewhat depressed. Also in this video, I'm gonna talk about the productivity crisis in Canada, and how it's impacting every single aspect of the economic life in the country. And it has a direct correlation to the GDP. We're going to discuss this. And even if we are not feeling the immediate impact of the productivity on the real estate market, sooner or later, this will translate into problems for this market as well. And I think this will happen rather sooner than later. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking about those two topics. And I think this is important for you to understand what's going on with the foundational things related to the Canadian economy to appreciate how difficult it is going to be for us to enter the growth cycle in the short term. So stay tuned. Canadian real estate prices slipped further on weak demand and rising inventory. Yes, for the um, 100th time this year, we're talking about the same set of issues. Experts originally anticipated the market boost from further rate cuts, but now share uncertainty as dark clouds form over the labor market. So now the labor market is the culprit. Before it was the high interest rates, and the predictions were that once the policy rate go down, goes down, we will have a um, quick boost to the real estate market. Where are those predictions now? And, uh, you know, as mentioned before, I wonder if there is any correlation between the salary and the bonuses that they're getting at the end of the year and the quality of the predictions that they're spewing out. Well, the market has not recovered one bit after three consecutive rate cuts. And e even if we could have explained this away by the fact that we're in the summer for the first two, the third one came in the beginning of September. Then right after that, we had a TREB report for August. Over the Labor Day, things or up to the Labor Day, things are usually slow. Nothing has changed after the Labor Day. The market is pretty well the same as it was before and most likely will continue down the same trajectory between now and the end of the year. Canadian real estate prices fell another 1% last month. So, you know what, when we're looking at the Canadian perspective, um, we're getting a milder, more smoothed out picture of what's actually happening within the economy and the real estate market as a whole. When we look at a major metropolitan areas like um, Vancouver and Toronto, and I live in Toronto, so I care about the city and the conversations on this channel and mostly about the city of Toronto and the GTA. I work in, in the GTA as well. So it's important to me as to what's happening here. And it's important for you to understand what's happening here locally as well, because if, if you're trading real estate, most likely for most people, you're trading it locally too. So Canadian real estate prices fell another 1% last month. Nothing positive about that. We hit the peak in, uh, peak in, in 2023, March of that year. And after that, it's, it's been a roller coaster ride, mostly down. Canadian real estate prices are still on this slide as demand remi remains weak. The price of a typical home, composite benchmark, slipped 1% to $717,800 in August. It was slightly larger decline from a month before. Okay, no improvement month over month, no improvement certainly week over week. So we're talking about the same set of issues and this is probably a third take on this double dip situation with prices across Canada on a negative growth. And what that means is that the graph that we're looking at is forming a semblance of a letter W, right? So we're going down on a slide again and the prices are down 3.9% 
again so this is normally an indication of some sort of a correction within the marketplace so let's read on and see what the article says over the past 12 months home prices have generally weakened further annual growth remains negative with prices 3.9 percent to 28,800 lower than last year the benchmark is now 15.7 percent or 134,200 dollars below the record high post adjustments for the composite that's enough to be considered a correction but not a crash well thank god for that had we gone down by 30 percent it would have clearly been a crash but you know what when you live in Toronto and I had family visiting actually just last week from out of country they driving down the streets of the city they're looking at what's happening and they're saying well it looks like a prosperous city there, there aren't any problems with the economy that are absolutely apparent well you know what go downtown look at the um, encampments by the homeless homeless people that would probably be the very first indication of things changing here if you haven't been to the country or to Toronto over the past few years you will notice it right away but overall I agree it's not like people on the streets that you see are you know walking around with the I'm destitute look on their faces no I mean nothing of that is happening the the cars are newer there's a lot of expensive cars in the city there's a lot of expensive and upscale neighborhoods so the overall picture of the city of Toronto is still very much positive but you don't appreciate if you're just coming here fresh as to what's happening behind the scenes Canadian real estate is still experiencing weak demand even from a historical perspective home sales fell 2.1 percent to 39,600 units in August and remained slightly lower than the years leading up to 2020 this year began stronger with anticipation of rate cuts driving activity but that failed to materialize it's worth emphasizing that last year was already a weak number to slip lower so that's another thing that's quite interesting this narrative that we've been hearing over the past few months that once the rate cutting cycle starts in earnest and we had three cuts thus far and there are two that are quite a distance behind us at this point so one was back in June if I'm not mistaken the other one was in July so maybe the first one was back in May though and the anticipation was that the market would pick up right after that it didn't well the sellers took this message as a goal to action this anticipation of an increased activity in the marketplace better prices as a consequence of the rate cuts was taken by them quite seriously so a lot of people have come on the market um, over the summer even though they know that the summer is a slow period of time for real estate especially August all the same they did come in the market most of the people did not sell especially when we're talking about anything related to condos townhomes new construction so those are the most problematic zones within the real estate in the GTA some people have sold even with those those segments but it was the minority and uh, you know detached homes were selling fairly decently over the summer as well even though at a slower pace so they had to sit in the market for longer now in the fall we would have expected a much steeper increase in activity in the marketplace right after the Labor Day that's normally what happens but it didn't we don't have the full set of data yet anecdotally though when we're talking to people both buyers and sellers as uh, real estate agents and when we list property and we sell property and we act on behalf of buyers we don't see that the market had improved in September over what we saw back say in August or July all that much Canadian real estate inventory is rising as more sellers look to exit well yeah exactly some sellers actually held off and didn't list their property over the summer they decided to do this in the fall um, hoping that the third consecutive rate cut will increase the possibility of them actually getting a higher price for the property even further I'm not sure if those expectations are going to come true so you know we'll obviously monitor what's going to be happening in the market in the coming months until the end of the year but uh, frankly I don't foresee any massive improvements in what we've seen as compared rather to what we've seen over the past few months now we will be talking about the productivity crisis in Canada Canadian real estate fueling productivity crisis and quality of life to erode and that's coming from a recent report from TD Canada's economy went from struggling with productivity growth to an all-out crisis and the question that you're probably asking yourself is what relation does the productivity have 
to the real estate market, especially in Toronto and the GTA? And the answer is this. It has a direct correlation, first of all, to the Canadian GDP. Uh, it basically has th three chief factors that are responsible for either GDP rising or GDP falling. It's the productivity, it's the labor input, and it's the capital input. And if we're having a problem with the productivity within the country, and we're going to talk about this based on this report, then the other two variables, which is labor input and um, capital input, are supposed to be propping the GDP up. And it's not really happening. GDP per capita has been falling over the past seven quarters. So we have an all out crisis on our hands. And even though we're talking about productivity, it's impacting absolutely everything within the economy and it's impacting and will trickle down to what's happening within real estate just as well. Canada made progress through the 2010s. According to TD, it averaged annual growth of 1.2% for the decade prior to the pandemic. It's not huge growth, but any growth is better than the current environment. And what better way to illustrate the point then with a crooked arrow pointing to what to me resembles zero. I can't quite tell if there is a slim sliver of uh, a green bar here between 2019 and 2023. Well, let's take a look. Between 1989 and 1999, over the decade, the productivity growth was at roughly 1.6%. Then the following decade, 99 to 2009, it was at 1%, 2009 to 2019, 1.2%. I mean, those numbers are not exactly something to uh, boast about. Uh, for the developed economies, the expectation is that the productivity should be somewhere around 2%, perhaps. 2%, 1.2 was not great, but better than what this arrow is pointing to, which is effectively zero for the past four years. Since 2019, it has ceased to expand at all, setting Canada apart as one of the worst performing advanced economies, not to mention in stark contrast to the United States. Well, there's a big difference between what's happening in the United States and Canada. And I mean, there's lots of differences, but one of them is the fact that the Americans are enjoying the status of their currency as the reserve currency in the world. And even though that is you know, based on what I'm hearing can be changing, but it hasn't changed yet and will likely to change in any significant way in the coming years. So Canada does not have that. So we have to implement policies um, within the government and the banking sector that is that are, that are extremely conservative. And um, what we're seeing that's happening with the economy right now is just complete mismanagement on all levels. The issue is generally observed across most industries and there is no quick fix. However, one industry stood out, construction. So that's where they tying the data in the article to the title. Construction has seen biggest decline in labor productivity. Well, again, let's look at the decade between 2009 and 2019. Everything is above zero. So we have agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting. Well above zero. Extremely productive industry. Mining, oil, and gas extraction. So that's close to two. Utilities. Positive. Manufacturing. Well, we are roughly 1.2% or so. And then this dark, what looks to be a uh, green bar, dark green bar for construction is just barely above zero. Now let's fast forward to the period between 2019 and 23. We're seeing that agriculture had subsided or fell almost by a factor of two and everything else, that's the only thing that's still in the positive agriculture. Everything else fell below zero. Mining, oil and gas extraction is below zero. Utilities, well below zero. Manufacturing, somewhat below zero in construction. Whoa, construction is minus 2.3, 2.4. Canada's increased reliance on the industry has also amplified the impact on the economy. The bank's calculations show construction now accounts for 12.6% of all labor hours, up from 7% back in 97, not rising to double digits until the mid 2000s. They attribute the boost in part to the recent real estate boom. Construction is now a large, larger share of the economy and the manufacturing after consuming much of the investment over the past few years. Well, as we see here, construction has taken overtaken manufacturing in hours work. The bank does not see the importance of the industry fading, especially with the population boom. Consequently, they suggest fostering more industry innovation and training to improve individual output. Tackling the incentive for low productivity seems like a much more effective path though. State-backed stimulus driving construction to a level of demand not supported by fundamentals plays a large role in preventing firms from adopting more efficient processes. After all, if the reward for inefficiency is free money, such as government subsidized loans and tax credits, would you become more efficient? Well, okay, let's take a look at this graph again. Would you? No, uh, no, you would not become more efficient. The productivity will continue sliding down. Speaking of incentives, the bank expresses concerns about how they skew economic activity and investment. It just doesn't seem to stand out when they're discussing housing. Well, you know, that's one side of the coin. The other one is the attractiveness of the country for investment, both internal, 
domestic investment and foreign investment. And this is the last part of this article where TD warns that Canada is becoming a less competitive business environment. In the early 2000s, the country aggressively cut its corporate tax rate to outcompete global peers. It helped foster the investment boom seen in the decade before the pandemic. Since then, the rest of the world has caught up. One key shift was the US slashing its corporate rate from 35% to 21% in 2018. On top of its more aggressive tax credit system, the EU has also made cuts since the global financial crisis, ratcheting up the competition. Canada is becoming less appealing to investors, both foreign and domestic. And that does not help with the economic situation that we have here. So something needs to shift. Well, once again, I'm covering a story that's getting a bit long in the tooth. We're talking about rising inventory and we're talking about falling prices within real estate. And um, I'm hoping we're in 2024 that we're not really working towards securing this decade between 2020 and 2030 in history books as the last economic decade. Something that happened in many countries, but like Japan is a pretty good example. In 1989, they had a real estate crash. Well, so far we have a correction. And um, between 1990 and 2000, the economy was in the gutter and real estate was actually in the same place as well. So I'm hoping we're not heading down the same trajectory as we move forward towards 2030. One thing, though, on the backdrop of largely negative economic news that is somewhat positive is the fact that the Bank of Canada has been on a rate-cutting cycle and it should spur some activity within the economy. I mean, I understand there's lots of variables that are impacting what's going on, and some of the variables are absolutely structural. But... The fact that the rates are going down should spur investment, should increase the availability of money overall, and should at some point tip the balance within the buyer's heads that it's time for them to, for, for us to start going out and actually get active in the marketplace. Well, it's widely expected the interest rate cuts are going to continue till the end of the year. We will likely meet 2025 um, at 3.75 for the policy rate. It's also likely that the interest rate cuts will continue in 2025 as well. Most experts agree that we should land somewhere in between 3 to 3.5 percent for the policy rate sometime in 2025. This is bound to have a positive impact on activity within the real estate market. Whether or not this will fix the economy at large, is anybody's guess. Well, in the meantime, one thing that we can enjoy for certain is the balmy and warm weather outside. It's the second half of September. And unlike what we had back in July and August, where we had rain every single week, it seems that we are reliving the summer weather as it should be. So guys, that's about it for this video. If you like the content, hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm looking forward to your comments in the comment section below. And Lastly, if you want to talk to a group of great real estate agents, reach out to us. For this reason, so that you can connect with us easily, we're including a link to our calendars in the description box below. You can either connect to me, my name is Vlad, or to my partner, Mitra. We'll schedule a 15-minute free phone consultation conversation with you, and we'll talk about the objectives that are extremely important to you, your specific situation will help you make the right decision in this marketplace, whether you're thinking about selling or you're thinking about buying. That's about it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week.